Connors T, how are ye? Welcome to the Candle of Tales podcast and the final story in our Goddesses series. This episode is the story of a goddess of the Fir Bolg, here before even the Tua de Danon, Taltu, patron of the Enoch Talton, told by Aaron Hegarty. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash Candle of Tales or make a one-time donation to the PayPal button on our website. Like, share, and above all, enjoy. And for now, Aaron, tell us a story. Taltu watched. Taltu waited. Taltu was in tune with the land that she was in. This island had gifted her a safe haven, a place for her people to come and rejoice her people to fear Bulg. Taltu was married to the last great king of the fear Bulg, Oki McErk. When they left the lands in the south, they came to Ireland, all of them in the vogues. Wooden boats with sacks wrapped around them and oil to be waterproof. They left because they had been enslaved in the southern country, dragging clay from the coast to give the fertile land to the mountain ranges in the west. And Taltu had come with her king to this island. And when they landed, all of her people around this island, they walked following their heart and their footfall and their mind's eye until they landed in Ishnuk in the centre of Ireland. And there they all rejoiced to be in this land. They split it in five. Kuga for province. Kuga for five. In the south with the waterfalls, they found poetic art, craft, music making, and joy. In the West was knowledge and lore, stonework, hard work, and wisdom. And that was named Connacht. In the East, Leinster, well, there they had all of the bountiful, the abundance that was given to the fertile lands. And there was homeliness care, loving, admiration, hospitality. And in the north, well, Ulster had their conflicts, their strife, their fights, their hard-headedness, their stoic nature. And in the middle was Meath, and Meath where the centre of Ireland had Ishna and the Hill of Tara where the High King and Woman King would sit, Taltu and her husband, Oki McCurk. They ruled over the Fir Bullock in this land of five provinces, Munster and Connacht and Leinster and Ulster and Meath in the middle. And they saw hardships, but they saw their way through those. Taltu wanted to clear space for their hardships to become easy, loving life. But then they smelt the smoke from the north. The ships of the Tua de Danon had landed and now the mists was sinking and smouldering in with that smell of smoke. And they knew a tribe had come with magic and different metals and they wanted to share this land, but the Firbolg did not want to share. Taltu watched her husband make a choice to send Shreng, the strong, fierce, imposing warrior, to meet their embassy. Bress, the beautiful. Bress and Shreng conversed and talked and realized that they did not want to fight one another. Shreng so hard and so like the fear bulb to be indisposable, unmovable and stubborn and strong. 
But Shereng too saw that he did not want to fight the sharp, slick, fast moving and deadly sharp breaths of the Tuat de Danan, the people of the goddess Danu. They both went their ways, agreeing they should not fight, but both of their leaders decided they would not be able to share the land with the other tribe. And so the two declared war on one another. Taltu knew this would be a devastating battle. She did not know if her people would survive it, the second battle. After they had landed, they had had so many minor skirmishes and fights amongst themselves, but now they had to band together to fight against another race on the plains of Moitura known as the first ever battle of Moitura, where the pillars were erected and the bards looked down to record what happened in that battle. And Taltu watched as Fintan McBokra, the ever-living shapeshifter, came and offered advice to Oki McCurk and the Fearbolg as they faced the two a day. Although they fought fiercely that day, and for three consecutive days and nights. They did not survive, and they were down to the last group, and Shreng rallied at the last moment to face the onslaught of the two a day, and they swore to give their lives to this battle rather than being put under the yoke of another higher being and power. But they were saved and spared by the two a day who saw their courage and in their wisdom they did not want to lose the Firbolg's race. So they saved them and Taltu lived another day. The Firbolg went out west then. They took up the hardship of clearing spaces with the stones in the land and burying seaweed to make the land fertile. Decades passed, and Taltu, as she saw the fear bulg dwindle and become one with the two Ededanen, who had their own strife and conflict to concentrate on. They were being invaded once more by the by those in the north, the Fuimura people of undersea, the four Morians led by the Balor of the evil eye. Taltu, she did not want this war. She did not want another bloodshed. She did not want to weep once more for all she lost. She met Lu La Father, Lu the shining face of the two a day. She was his foster mother, and she taught him everything she could of love and light and sorrow and darkness. Because in the cycle of the year, you see all shades of human emotion go through, and only after death is rebirth possible. And she taught him too how to observe in the plant life, in the trees, the foliage, and the birds singing, how to recognize the signs of the seasons slipping into one after another and another. To watch the moon dwindle and dwindle and become big once again and how to match your energies with the seasons. How to take charge of your own energies in the dark hours after sowing and the celebrations. How to begin to plant seeds again in your own energies after imbol and look forward to Byautana before the summer is in full flight and Lunasa with the great harvest festival where everything is full of delight and you once more prepare for the darkness of the year to come on to you again. And Lu loved his foster mother, Taltu, and he aided her 
when she tried to clear a great plain on the hill of Tara, clearing it to make space for harvests, for food, so no longer they would be foraging, but they could sustain themselves in this land. And Taltu knew she had to do this, but something inside of her broke after a year and a day of clearing this space. And she tried so hard to clear this space for her, to allow herself to get over her own terrible past and suffering and sadness for all that she had seen and witnessed die in this land and for all of the trees that she cut down in the death that she saw, she saw an abundance being made possible, a bounty full in this land. And just as easy, she saw how it could tip into devastation and destruction. And she prayed that all of the forests would not one day be destroyed as she had destroyed this, to serve the people with agriculture and food and survival. But she died of a broken heart, they say. She could not overcome her struggle and her strife. And on her deathbed, when she was lying with her broken heart, she said to Lu Love Father, make a festival day at Lunasa for all to gather with games and delight for fun and encouragement, for this sense of childlike wonder, to play in sports of challenges and feats of strength and skill, of combat and hurling, of football and racing, of skill and athleticism, of equestrian sports as well, of craft and making and beautiful brooches to contest with others, beautiful craft making work and poetic bards and music storytelling and song. And all of this was done in the Enoch Taltu. The Enoch Taltu were her games in honour for the beloved dead that had passed on by. And for people to come together before the hardships of the winter, to celebrate the harvests and the bountifulness of the land to celebrate Bamba, Fola and Eru, the goddesses of this land, and to celebrate Taltu and Lunasa the first. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales or send us a message or get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist. Hashtag Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channel really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with your questions and requests. So please feel free to contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below because what we really want to do is get these stories out there. Share them with as many people as possible. So anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we really appreciate you listening. Good meal,